Dialing for Dingbats is a 1989 comedy directed by Peter Slodzik and starring Michael Jeffries, Marta Dargham, Lori Fox, and John Caponera. The film opens with some sweet mullet action. Dino is always watching. Randy makes a phone call and it gets really awkward. Oh, oh well. Forget it. Uh, never mind. Yeah, right. Never mind, geek. There's some foam violence and that microwave has more knobs than a stereo. Why are there no sparks? Shame. Is it on? Oh, okay. Attention shoppers, this is your lucky day. Not only is it Al's name day, but we have another spectacular light sale about to begin. Watching this asshole shop is so exciting. There's a bit of a porn plot that then becomes a disaster. And she fucking leaves. Someone is stepping in that. There it is. Randy is a tailor at the store and there's going to be a fire. Actually, no, there's no payoff from that. He gets some measurements and heads to do the work. Well, what do you think? He literally tapped that ass. He gets a boner, but it gets intercepted. Really helping that girl. Man, really helping that girl. Oh, oh, oh. I can't believe it. This is how babies are made, folks. The Toxic Avenger trailer? Oh, that's right, this is a trauma movie. This guy looks like a low rent Christopher Plummer. If you then it's obviously too late. It's time to pack it in. You're a hopeless case. Maybe it's time you call the best friend's funeral parlor. <laughs> and if you order now, you receive at no extra charge a free video copy of the original Night of the Living Dead. I actually own that exact VHS copy of Night of the Living Dead somewhere. I'm not digging it out of the box because this movie's not fucking worth it. It's a public domain standard. Randy goes to the kitchen to commit suicide. Then there's a knock at the door. He gets a delivery and wow, this is a really dark flick. And he fails at that too. Picture if you will, a lonely guy. Fuck you. Maybe it's time our friend took a trip into the party line zone. Party line? Man, I really need to plan these better. Hopefully you'll be able to fucking watch this one. Ernie meets Randy and sells him on the merits of using a party line. Trust me. Guys do meet girls, are not they? Or killers. Or underage babysitters you're stalking. Visual aids! Is to get the girl's phone number so that you can call her off the line. This way you could talk to her longer. Won't everyone hear the phone number? Look at that cell phone. Ernie bullshits around and gets her number. Maybe. Here's my number. 714. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Or not. Has he been trying to sell Randy on this all day? He's still not convinced and they end up at Ernie's place and it looks like they're just going to watch some porn. Nope, it's Ernie on a talk show saying the same shit all over again, so it's a complete waste of time. Ronald Reagan? You see that, kid? It's legit. Convince me. Well, let's just say I'm putting the ball in your court. I'll see if you can dribble. Jesus. And Randy finally calls into this fucking party line. Ernie coaches some more. Yeah? How about that Robin chick? Yeah. She sounds hot. Yeah? 
How can you hear what's going on? Randy ends up connecting with Robin, but Dave calls and he doesn't seem very welcome. Dave is full of shit, but Randy is also full of shit. Actually, I, I, I own a clothing store. Yeah. And it's over! Which brings us to lesson number four. Don't lie. Yeah, you catfishing scumbag! Randy calls back in, hearing from Robin and making a date. See, this is why you need to go private, because this asshole is taking down all the details. And the next day, Dave shows up and takes Robin away. See? Doxing. Randy then arrives, and I wonder how early Robin arrived. Hey, my house is just up the street a bit. You don't mind if we stop in for a minute, do you? This is how horror movies start. No self-control. They go to a house and go swimming until the owners arrive, and Dave fucking leaves. Man, they're really milking that Toxic Avenger footage. Depression! <laughs> ah! And he's back to the phones. Question, is he wearing panties? This whole movie really is just talking on the fucking telephone. Robin calls and they learn about what happened, and I'm now wondering why they just don't give each other their numbers. Actually, I work with computers. I have my own IBM AT personal computer with 40 meg hard drive and dual floppy. <laughs> Dave works his ship but ends up getting busted. Ah! I'm melting! Ah! Holy shit! The party line announces a pizza party. And Randy and Robin make a date to go together. This is your brain on the party line. This may be the most parody commercial of all time. Any questions? Yeah, is this movie over yet? What's on her face? If it's cocaine, you're doing it wrong. Too much! Tommy was so... This is a dream sequence that ends horribly. Robin? You walked right past each other, you dumbasses! And Randy calls the party line from a payphone with some change, which is impossible because how in the hell is the number supposed to make money? She's right behind you! Pizza time. The rest of the sequence is just people from the party line meeting each other, and it's as horrible and useless as it sounds. Randy gets caught in traffic and gets a flat tire. Excuse me, do you happen to be Robin? Of course I'm Robin! What do you think I'm doing? Fuck you! Dave shows up causing a fight, and Randy and Robin finally meet each other. Wow, their relationship moved fast. Nice shorts. I mean, why are you hurrying? We got a whole life together ahead of us. That's about how long this movie feels. Okay. Dialing for dingbats could possibly be the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. Five people wrote this screenplay. You would expect one of them to know what the fuck they were doing. There are two laughs in this thing, tops. Why is Ernie harassing Randy? It's not like his venture is making money because apparently you can just call by sticking a fucking quarter in a payphone. Other than the irony of the ads that ran during it, dialing for dingbats is forgotten trash that should remain forgotten. So what you're trying to tell...